Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. Now, uh, if we could get 400 likes on this video, that would be fantastic. And if you are still enjoying the series, of course, do hit the like button. So, enjoy some highlights of the games we've played this month. We're going to be playing Barnet in our Johnson's Paint Trophy second leg, and you'll see why in a minute, because it's been a bit of a weird month, and I think I know the reason, but enjoy these highlights anyway, and I'll join you guys in a sec. Slips it through, Coogan's is in, the goalkeeper doesn't come, because of course not, and Bar well, Barnet have the lead with their first shot. Oh, bloody goalkeepers. <laughs> Flick through. Coogan's in here for Barnet. He scored another one. Oh, my Jesus. Barnet 2. Leak 2, Barnet 2. Wimbledon nil. We've done everything. We've missed penalties. We've had red cards. We're not at the races. Reeves' is ball in. Aziz with the header. And we are back in the game with a few minutes left in it. Adebayo Aziz. Barnet 2. Wimbledon 1. There we go. Barnet of League 2. 2. Wimbledon. Top of League 1. 1. Um, we did everything, but just nothing went in for us in today's game, unfortunately with the ball in. O'Reilly's headed down and Ford heads it into the back of the net. Wimbledon 1, Oxford United 0 and we're staying at the top of the league which is incredible. Well there we go, Wimbledon 1, Oxford 0 despite having William Nightingale in goal, uh, no sorry, Ryan O'Reilly in goal for the final 10 minutes due to the injury, uh, we managed to get away with a 1-0 win. Gale going into space here, he's got, oh what a strike that is from Dwight Gale. Birmingham City of all people, 1, Wimbledon 0, Dwight Gale with an absolute thunder bucket of a goal. Hill's there, and it's another goal for Birmingham, this time from a corner would you believe. Birmingham 2, Wimbledon 0, and they're looking like they're trying to get some revenge on us, but our lead at the top still stands. But Birmingham City 2, Wimbledon 0, um, Birmingham have not proved to be as bad as they were in the two previous games. It in brilliantly there and Taylor's across and it is 1-0. Swindon 0, Wimbledon 1, Lyle Taylor's 15th of the season. Brilliant stuff. Armour's ball in and would you believe it, another goal from a corner. Swindon 1, Wimbledon 1, Ryan Innes equalises for struggling Swindon. We need to do better than this, guys. Bull has made an error there. Green's got a bit of space. Can he get across into the box, though? He probably can pull this back. You know, he's going to go alone. Comes to a Josie and it's 2-1 to Swindon. They've turned it around on us and frankly, they've been utterly insatiable in the first 15 minutes of this game. We've had no other reply to them, really. There we go. Swindon really struggling. Swindon 2, Wimbledon 1. Right, guys, we're back. So as you can see, we have dropped down a second, but we do still have a game in hand. And you'll have known from the fixtures we just had um, that we've lost a couple of games against poor sides. Swindon and Birmingham away are not results that I would have expected earlier in the season. And I think I know the reason for that. But before I tell you about that, um, question of the day. So the next question is this. Will you ever do a Pentagon challenge? If so, when? Uh, probably not. The, the reason why I won't do one on YouTube is just because there's been lots of them on YouTube as well. And I believe Jack is actually doing one, or he certainly was uh, planning to. So do go watch that. Uh, but... I don't think I could add anything to it personally. Um, so that's why I'm not doing it, basically. And I, I just think that I'm not sure however I could pull that sort of save off, frankly. And that's why I'm not doing it. I prefer the story where we build up one particular club. That's just the way I like doing things. Um, I've never done one outside of YouTube either, frankly. I just, I don't know, I've never had the patience, really. But have you ever done a Pentagon Challenge? If so, how, who did you manage? And where did you get to? And how long did it take to actually complete it? And did you complete it as well? If you do have any ideas, of course, for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Right, so yeah, we're second in the league now, but we do still have that game in hand. I can't remember who it is against, but we have lost a couple of games this month. Um, so yeah, that winning streak seems to have um, evaporated slightly. And form is clearly important. That one defeat, um, I think it was the Oldham one, really did knock our confidence. I think it was the Oldham game. Yeah, but look at our, we've actually only won once um, since that game, and that was against Oxford. So things have clearly taken a bit of a back burner as a result of it, but that just shows you how important momentum can be on FM this year. I've really noticed that if you get a couple of wins, you're likely to get a few more. And if you get a couple of losses, I mean, look at this, the stark contrast that we need to get back to form time. We actually lost against Barnet of League Two, and we were good on the night as well. Um, but the thing I think that's changed, particularly this month, is I'm playing Tony Harris. And the reason for that is because I don't want him to leave. I really don't. And apparently someone's told me in the comments that I shouldn't sell him, that we should just play him for the rest of the season in either of the two positions, get his morale up and try and get him to sign a new contract. So I'm taking that risk. I am taking that risk. I'm following your advice. I'm going to keep him. I'm not going to sell him in January. We're going to play him for the rest of the season in that middle role because I still feel that we can be successful even with him in there and I don't think it's all down to him I don't but I think that he's part of the reason because with Shenton and Reese had a really nice partnership in there but if we could get him fluid in that position his morale would then improve because he's actually playing for us as a key player and hopefully then we could get him on a new contract that is the plan uh, because if we can sign him on a new deal then the fact is he will be an absolute linchpin in that midfield for years to come and that's the risk I'm taking right now but I feel like it's probably for the best of this save and the fact is even with those results we're still only a point off the top and we have a game in hand because Barnsley just don't seem to know what a win is anymore uh, they have been absolutely useless they lost at home to Preston in their last game uh, Preston are a decent side of course but still um so we've managed to maintain our gap over them of course the gap's got a bit tighter now though so we're a point off the top but only three points away from fourth place Walsall who are closing in 
rapidly. But still, things aren't going too badly. So the top goal scorer at the moment is James Lawbridge with 19. Lyle, Lyle Taylor has 15, but he's actually played 10 less matches. So to give you an idea, he's actually been pretty prolific. Assists, Jake Reeves is all about that life. Man of the match, Wards. Frankham still, but he's going to be out for, I don't know how much longer he's going to be out for. Um, two to four weeks. Okay, so he could be back by sort of March kind of time. Maybe. Uh, but it's still going to take him a little while to get match fitness. Key passes. Reeves and Loveridge. Loveridge had another game, though, where he had nine key passes. He may not be scoring that many goals, but he's providing assists and the passes. He's providing a lot of hockey assists. That's what I'm finding. Um, that, that's the key for me. He's not been great over the last few games, but his hockey assists have been perfect. And I wish that was a credited stat, frankly, that you could use. Um, key tackle was Johnny Byrne, although he did get sent off earlier. Uh, but look at the amount of interceptions. 420. He's a monster in the air uh, and on the ground, clearly. So uh, let's get into today's game against Barnet. It's going to be a difficult one. There is no two ways about that. What is going on here? Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Fitness test. Tom Elliott is nowhere near fit. Chelsea Tottenham, fine. And it is... Oh, they're playing a 4-4-2. And the thing is, they actually played a 4-4-2 in the first leg as well and beat us. So... But I am still going to persist with this. So who are we going to play in first? Shenton's not been great over the last few matches. So I'm going to put Harris in for him uh, to play as the ball winning midfielder today. Uh, sorry, box-to-box -box midfielder because Harris is he's getting there. Um, look at the stats. He's so good already uh, in these areas. And I just feel like if we can get him into this area, get him competent, he is being trained there. But... Uh, he wants me to strengthen the squad. Let's have a little look at his... Feels as time is running out for him to loan it out. Feels he's not getting enough coaching attention. Needs to leave for first-team football. He's playing first-team football. Why does he want to be loaned out when he's been playing first-team football? If I keep playing him, will that just disappear? Because I really hope that's the case. Uh, strengthening the squad. We, strength, we brought in loads of players. I guess they just... Mm, that could be the main problem, is the lack of strengthening the squad, according to them. I mean, who cares if he's top of the league or anything? But if you didn't buy loads of expensive players, they don't give a shit. Um, they're like Janice from accounting. Anyway, um, so... Right, we want the highlights back on, obviously. Goal action. Let's get into this then. I expect us to go through, but I thought I'd play this one as the live comp, purely because we are losing in on the night, or on the tie, so to speak. So I figured it might be an interesting one, just because we're up against the wall a little bit, and I'd be interested to see how we can cope with our backs against the wall in a game that we need to win by at least one goal, I think. I don't know how it works, whether there's away goals or not. Um, and on the back of a losing streak. So we've been really poor lately, to be honest. And Jake Reeves has not done... Tony Harris, I would say this. When he's played, he himself has not actually played that badly. The, just, the team just doesn't seem to function as a unit so well when he's in the team. It's it's strange. I'm not putting it all down to him because I don't think that's the reason. I think it's just a bit of bad form, which we really do need to shake off. But then every tactic has bad form. Um, obviously, I've still not found out what you guys have successes you've had with the tactic. Some people have sent me some screenshots on Twitter and stuff of ridiculous results. So clearly this tactic has something. I've just yet to figure out what it is. And if it continues and we do have a good season and I've got enough sort of stats and stuff from you guys, then I will put the tactic up uh, as a proper download at the end of the season. Kinsella, it's ricocheting all over the place and Teixeira, of all people, puts it in the back of the net. Wimbledon won, the Barnet nil. A good start, actually. We've limited them to basically no shots. Then again, we did that in the last game against them too. We've actually had, we had so many chances before they'd even had a shot and they scored it. And from that moment on, they actually became very, very good. Um, it seemed to give them that, that extra confidence and it just absolutely destroyed them. And as you saw in the Swindon game, I think we conceded about nine clear-cut chances against Swindon and only lost 2-1. They really did not want the win and we just couldn't do it ourselves either because we had plenty of chances. On another day, we could have even won that game because they were so wasteful. But then on another day, we could have also lost 8-0. So, one of those things, I guess. Um, one nil up, I think we could do with a second goal just to make sure we get there we've been given a pretty plum draw to be honest by you know once we beat Birmingham City and South End, the two draws against you know Portsmouth were a League Two side and Barnet are a struggling League Two side we've actually been given a decent run to potentially a final here um that will of course be a live comp obviously because a cup final for us you know I don't think I've ever won the Johnson Spank trophy on any of my saves before Fuller can he pull it across I don't think we ever did well with Portsmouth Loveridge is in there and now it is 2-0 James Loveridge that's where he's at his best, when he's running those near posts and just sort of standing there and getting on the end of things. 20 goals this season for James Loveridge. I really wish Lyle Taylor didn't have to keep going out on international duty, which is why he's missed the 10 games that he has, frankly, because he keeps having to go away for international duty and we can't postpone games. Uh, good finish from Taylor. Uh, Taylor? From Loveridge. And it is 2-0 to Wimbledon. And that should be really us in the bag, but I'd like to see a couple more goals, frankly, because... I, don't, I was hoping that the original game against Barnet would be a good chance to, for us to get some confidence back with a win, but the, the bad form really did shake things up. I actually had a team meeting after the Swindon game just to say, come on, Kinsella's ball across, Taylor's in and it is now 3-0. Insta highlight, Kinsella with the assist, and Lyle Taylor smashes at home for 3-0 to Barnet. Uh, Barnet. 
they, they, they bloody wish. Lovely little play, though. Harris with the ball outside. That'll probably count as a key pass as well. Kinsella skins the last man, whips it across the corridor of uncertainty, and Taylor just there to pop it into the back of the net for 3-0. That should be game set a match at this point. I'm not sure how Harris is doing today. He's on a 7.1, so he's actually one of our best performers so far. But two assists for Lewis Kinsella is outrageously good. Um, I don't really feel the need to take a look at pros, then. We're 3-0 up, uh, to be honest. I've been looking at pros under in those other games, and it just... Something wasn't right, and I couldn't figure out what it was. I've looked back, and I just... I don't know. Maybe it was just form. Maybe sometimes you just cannot win, um, and I put that down to form generally, but I think sometimes you can, and I think if I'd have been better at the pros on stats, we probably could have turned it around, frankly. Have Barnett had any key passes at all? Not one. Eleven from us. Uh, I want to see if there's any players on our team that are really particularly standing out uh, as being pass monsters. So, lots of people on two, but lots of key passes in the middle. Reeves and Harris doing a lovely job there. Uh, Harris probably the performing better of the two, despite being the box-to-box -box midfielder, rather than the playmaker. Anyway, let's jump back into the second half, and uh, maybe get a couple more goals. If we got three or four, well, we've already got three, so if we manage to get four or five goals against them, wow, Coogan's has just been straight... Whew. Um, I think in the Barnet game, I can't actually remember because it was a little while ago today that I played it, but I'm fairly certain in the first Barnet game there was one of those annoying ones where the goalkeeper should come, but he just doesn't. Because I'm pretty certain Coogan's was the one that scored the goal. Stevens is through, goalkeeper's come out and just, again, not got anywhere near it. And Matthew Stevens has put them back into it. Um, and it's 4-3. There's still a chance for Barnet here if they would have gone a bit of a run here. But again, I just feel like he's wearing yoga pants again, lads. He should, but then they just sort of stop. They don't ever rush out and slide in at their feet. They always sort of go about halfway and then they just sort of dive, even when they could probably maybe get there. It's a weird mechanic that doesn't feel right to me. Um, it doesn't feel realistic. There's too many goals for and against I'm seeing it like that. And so it's not just our tactic that's causing that. I, I see other t we score goals like that against other teams as well. It's really frustrating to watch. Um, so I also noticed that we actually had Harrison Ford uh, as two of our midfielders. So there you go. The Star Wars midfield. That Hopefully we could... Mm, Oh, I was going to say we need an x on the wing. That's terrible. Terrible jokes. Apologies. Um, so, what changes do we want to make? I'm actually going to bring off Reeves because Harris is playing better and Shenton could come in there just as easily to play. Kinsella's been beautiful today. Johnny Burns on a booking, so we'll get him off as well. And that'll probably be okay for now. But 4-3 on aggregate. But if, oh, I said, well, they've come back. They've, they've had a shot and they've scored it. Brilliant. I mean, well done, men, frankly. Uh, right. We've been the better side, and the possession is looking good still, but we've still got to be careful. You know, a third goal for a second goal for Barnet. I don't know if that would actually send them through or not, because again, I can't remember if there's away goals count or not. I guess we'll find out if they do. Um, probably not the way I wanted to find out. Probably should have checked that before, really, shouldn't I? Ford. To Sh oh, I was say to Shenton, but it's been blocked. Stevens. We're playing quite a high line. I'm actually tempted to drop it a little bit deeper because Barnet seem to be pushing quite high up here. Um, Dembele. After this highlight, I'm tempted to drop the high in back a little. Oh, for the love of Jesus! What a block! And it's gone to Loveridge now. Can he flip it around the corner for Taylor? Taylor gets, just gets caught on his heels a little bit there. Um, Barnet have actually... They're offering again. This is what they did against us in the last game. I think there's probably too much time has elapsed now. Um, oh, Jesus. We've got so many knackered boys on the bench here. Uh, Toure... <laughs> Adebayo Aziz for Lyle Taylor, maybe? Oh, what the hell? Oh, right. Okay. There we go. That'll have to do. Um... The bench. Unfortunately, with these Johnston's Paint Trophy games, we can only have five subs, and we have to have... There's a certain percentage of the team that played in the last league match that has to play in the game, which is really weird and very annoying. And I think you get fined if you don't do it. I um, don't know how much the fine is, but I can't imagine it's huge because it's the Johnston's Paint Trophy. They probably have the financial clout of, well, you know, your local high street. Still, Aziz is in, and that looked offside to me, but it doesn't look like it's going to be given. And it is... Wimbledon 4, Barnet 1, and that should send us through quite nicely. Uh, Adebayo Aziz has done all right for us this month. I think he scored the winner against Oxford, or was it against Birmingham? No, he got the uh, the goal back against Birmingham. Shenton's ball, that to me looked like it definitely was offside, but Aziz has put the finish in the... And I know for a fact that sometimes they don't always get given. A little bit lucky there that we got away with that, but it is 4-1. Uh, is there a fifth one coming? No, it looks like this is just going to be the end of the game, though. A 4-1 win sends us through to the JPT final, and hey... Never won it with Portsmouth. Never even got close to winning it with Portsmouth. So to say oh, we can do this this year, that would be quite something. If we were to win a trophy, even if we weren't to get promoted, and frankly, I feel like if we did get promoted this year, that could cause all kinds of problems next year in the championship. Because I think the main reason that we're doing as well as we are this year is not really because of the player. Obviously, it's because of the players. But I feel like the tactic itself is driving that. And I feel like there's a, a ceiling to what it can do. And I feel like perhaps the championship would be too much of a step up. League 1 and League 2, I think the teams are actually quite fairly balanced. There's a few good sides and a few bad sides. But I think for the sort of middle section, it's almost as you can see from how well Luton are doing. Um, so let's just see. I don't know if we know who we're actually going to be playing yet. No, it's unknown. I don't know who the other uh, game was featuring. Let's just take a little quick gander. Uh, north, north final is 
Bradford City and Scunthorpe. So, um, whoever said they wanted to... Oh, there was away goals. That could have been a bit worrying, couldn't it? Whoever said they wanted to see a Bradford live comp, well, you're going to see a Bradford live comp now uh, because... Wait a minute. That is definitely finished now, isn't it? Don't know why it's not scheduled it. Anyway, yeah, we're going to be playing Bradford City in the JPT final. Um, that will be a live come, of course, but it won't be for a little while yet. Not till sort of April. That's really late, actually. So in the next episode, I'm thinking... Oh, actually, it has to be. It's a top-of-the-table clash against Barnsley away from home. Um, the Coventry game would be... Oh, I just feel like Barnsley... I know someone wants to see the Berry game, but I just feel like a top-of-the-table clash against Barnsley is going to be more entertaining because there's going to be so much more riding on it and it'll be a much more difficult game and I think that that's probably better for the live comm anyway. Um, so, guys, if you like what you've seen and you like the fact that we're actually in a bloody trophy final in the first well second season of this say which is outrageous please do drop a like on the video that would be magnificent and if you have liked it even more than that and you haven't already please do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in your inbox every single day at seven o'clock and i will see you guys in the next episode for an away game against barnsley at oakwell where hopefully if they pull their fingers out they might actually have some chance of beating us i say hopefully i want to absolutely smash them there but i don't know this will be a tough one for us i'll see you guys soon thank you so much for watching Bye bye